When the Frozen Wilds DLC came out for Horizon Zero Dawn, it brought along with it a new set of unique modifications, and some of them were clearly better than anything else you could get in the base game. And the most powerful of these new modifications was the pristine weapon curl, which made weapons not only faster, but added a lot of damage and quickly became a staple of New Game Plus speedruns. So the question is, did the same thing happen with the Burning Shores DLC for Horizon Forbidden West? Well, there's a new modification that allows you to do this. And in case you're wondering, this and all the footage you will see in this video is recorded on Ultra Hard Difficulty as you can see in the settings right here. So that shot was achieved with the new Elite Critical Hits modifications, and it's absolutely insane just how good these carls are, as I'll show you in this video. I almost forgot what it was like to hurt. So first off, let's talk about where you get this modification. Like I said, it's a mod from the Burning Shores DLC and can be found at the end of the first main quest called To the Burning Shores after destroying the tower. But there's a little trick you can do here to get two modifications per playthrough. So you want to loot the tower right after destroying it and make sure you don't talk to Sega first. Because then after you talk to Sega, another modification will spawn. So if you loot the tower before and after talking to Sega, you will get two. It's a neat little trick so you can get more than one per playthrough. You can then also use a duplication glitch to get even more faster. Wink wink. So how does the Carl work? Well, it gives you a 15% boost in your chance of getting a critical hit, as well as a 15% boost in damage. The damage is fine, but obviously 15% is not quite as good as some other mods that will give you a 25% damage boost. But the big deal here is the higher chance of getting critical hits, because a critical hit will significantly boost the amount of damage you get per shot, if you are lucky enough to get a crit. So in order to take advantage of this, we want as high of a chance to get a critical hit as possible. So this means we have to go for a relatively simple loadout. So for this, I'm going to use my go-to sharpshot bow, which is the Ivory's Downfall. This is because this is the only sharpshot bow that has the elite precision arrows, which just pack a nice punch. It also has a nice skill that gives me an extra damage bonus if I fire off concentrated shots, which just lends itself really well to the aggressive playstyle you would need in a speedrun. And as for the modifications, I simply throw on 5 of the elite critical hit modifications, because they will give me a 75% boost in damage, but more importantly, they will now give me an 80% chance of getting a critical hit, because the modifications combined obviously gives me a 75% chance of getting a critical hit, but also Sharpshot Bows has a natural 5% chance of getting a critical hit. This means that now, every time I fire this bow, 4 out of 5 of my shots will be a critical hit. Then if you want to get even more damage out of this loadout, you can take advantage of an outfit that has the skill called Low Health Range. This will give you a damage boost when you're below 50% health, something you've probably seen me take advantage of in my New Game Plus speedruns, where I use the outfit called the Tanakh Vanquisher to take advantage of this skill. So using this loadout with the weapon technique called Focus Shots allows you to have a really quick and aggressive playstyle that you see right here. Now this has massive potential going forward when it comes to the New Game Plus speedrun, especially on ultra hard difficulty. I've already played around with it quite a bit on my stream and tested some strategies and I'm really excited to use this in runs going forward. Because in runs prior to the Burning Shores, the main strategy was to use a Bolt Blaster with sustained bursts to gun down the machines. It was pretty effective, but it was not really that fun to do in my opinion, as it basically forced you to stand still and then all you had to do was aim a little bit. But with this loadout you will be able to be way more mobile during combat sections, and it will have the extra skill level of having to aim and hit specific weak spots in order to get the most out of each shot, which will increase the skill gap and the potential of the speedrun. But it is still important to remember that not every shot will crit, and that we are playing with the arts using a setup like this. So sometimes, well, you'll just get unlucky. I also quickly want to take the opportunity to answer two questions that I've gotten a lot recently. So first one being if I'm going to make an updated video that will go over all the weapons I use in speedruns in detail. And of course, I will be doing that, and it's coming out very soon, so look forward to it. The second question is if I'm going to do speedruns on ultra hard difficulty, starting from a fresh new game playthrough. And the answer to that is yes. It is one of my main projects that I will be doing in the near future. So if you want to see that happen live, come hang out in my stream if you want to see the progression and the development of strategies for it. Link to my stream is in the description below. And don't worry, there will definitely also be videos on this channel going over all the strategies I will be doing in those runs. So look forward to it. 
Now, let's talk about one more element to this loadout that will give it a further damage boost, which is the Valor Searches. My personal favorite Valor Search is the Chain Burst, which chains the damage from the enemy you are hitting to another enemy and so on, as long as they are close enough together. So a good place to showcase just how good this Valor Search can be is here at the Core, because you have a lot of enemies just coming in large packs clumped together. So take a look at this. Now, as promised, it's time to take a look at what this loadout can do against Tilda and her Spectre Prime, because this is where it truly shows just how crazy this loadout is. So we are going to cover her in Asset, which will give our shot an extra boost when we hit one of her gold plates. Then I'm going to activate the Range Master Valor Search and shoot her gold plate just once. And there you have it, that was Spectre Prime defeated in just one shot. Or I'm sure some people watching this will probably be like, um, excuse me, but that is not a pure one shot as you hit it with acid first. Well, yes, 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 you are correct. It is not a pure one shot because of the acid. So if you want to flame me in the comments, then be my guest. But it is awesome that with this simple loadout we are able to destroy the final boss just like that. And it will be exciting to see how the new game plus speedruns will improve going forward. I'll do my best to keep you all up to date on the development. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this showcase of how overpowered this new coil is. So thanks for watching, take care.